Really excited to have Shipra back with us. Um, and if anyone, you know, could understand technology troubles while working remote, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, you know, Sh- Shipra is the one who's facilitated over 100 des- remote design workshops, uh, being a UX strategist for over 15 years. Um, most recently, Shipra was the UX director at Upwork. And she led the company's transition towards embracing design thinking and design sprints as part of the product development process. So really excited, uh, you know, to learn all about remote sketching today. Oh, thank you so much, guys. It's so great to be back here. I'm going to just set up all of my Zoom areas. And hi. So the most common reaction I've gotten over the last five years when I tell people what I do is a very skeptical way. So you do design on a video call. My name is Shipra and uh, like Preet said, I facilitate remote design workshops, conversations, sprint studios, whatever you might wanna call it. Basically I work with a lot of different types of teams. I work with uh, teams that have like a big headquarters and little like a few distributed team members uh, teams that have multiple offices, um, and also frogs or fully remote orgs. They're my favorite teams to work with. And right now, in a weird twist of fate, we're all frogs. I used to also have to tell people that remote work does not look like this. It's not people on a beach. It, it looks like this. <laughs> and now, we're not just working remotely, we're working through a pandemic with anxieties um, and all kinds of sort of feelings of of stressors and loneliness and and exhaustion. And my talk will not try to cover the effects of the pandemic on our work. I'm purely gonna speak from my experience doing remote design for almost like over five years and talk about remote sketching. So when I start working with a company, I usually look at their sort of design tools. Do we have the right toolkit to make sort of remote design successful? Um, Obviously some sort of a combination of Zoom and Slack is useful. Uh, Figma and Vision Freehand, you know, one of those tools, design collaboration tools, and um, something like Google Suite where you have collaborative documents, spreadsheets, slides, super helpful. However, I think online whiteboards are super key in especially in sort of the early stages of problem framing and ideation. Um, And especially at times when we want to visually collaborate with people who are not designers. Figma can be a little intimidating for a lawyer or someone from marketing, but these online whiteboards, Miro and Mural are the top two right now. They're not that intimidating in my experience. And I am still a big believer in drawing and sketching. And that's what I wanna talk to you guys today about. How to sketch remotely. Sketching is a big part of our sort of design process. And I don't wanna lose sort of the collaborative sketching experience just because we're all kind of stuck at home right now. For drawing and sketching, when I work with design leaders that are really trying to build a distributed, strong distributed design culture, I advocate getting iPads and pen, Apple pencils for everyone. Um, any kind of stylus, Wacom, whatever, like Apple's not paying me to say this, any kind of stylus-based interaction is really helpful. But also, so is paper and pen. There's, there's something about paper and pen that will never go away. I'll talk about how to use these tools effectively. So the best part about designers sitting together in a space Um, and I know that a lot of my design team wanted to sit together and not in their pods, is because as designers, we get stuck in in sort of these micro decisions where we're constantly making trade-offs, tabs versus tags, vertical or horizontal map, should I have a preview page or not after this flow? Uh, And that that just kind of looking up and just being like, hey, hey, do you have a moment? Can I run something by you? That that interaction is kind of lost. That's probably the primar- primary way in which we collaborate or we collaboratively sketch today or did when we were in offices. <laughs> and so you might look up, find someone that looks kind of like they're free, maybe mildly bored, and then you walk over to a whiteboard. 
there are two things that a whiteboard does really well. One is that it has really flexible fidelity. It doesn't constrain you into like UI elements. You can draw flows, bullet points, whatever it is that you need for your conversation. And the conversation is key, right? Your sketch or the whiteboard output is not what you're going for. What you're going for is having that conversation and being able to, to come to some sort of a solution. The other thing that, that's really great about a whiteboard is you can have a really high bandwidth conversation, right? Like you're with someone, you know when to jump in and sketch, when to pause, um, you know all the designery feelings of are they feeling delighted or defensive? There's like so much interaction that's happening. How do you do all of this remotely? So it, in a, on a very tactical level, this is what you do differently, but it is kind of hard in practice. So the first thing is finding someone to chat with. And this actually is the hardest part I found in terms of moving from an in-person cultural setting to a remote setting. <clears throat> so instead of looking up from your screen and looking for who's available, what you might do is put in your Slack team channel, like a little message, hey, I, I need some help. I need someone to run uh, bounce ideas off of. Just let me know if you have five or 10 minutes to help me out. It sounds so simple, but in practice, it's really hard to do this. And I found that when I was a new manager, I used to tell my team, hey, use each other's, um, uh, you know, use each other's ideas and thoughts and like collaborate. But it was really hard. We're so good. We're so good at setting 30 minute meetings, but nobody sets five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute meetings. And nobody does these impromptu sort of, hey, can we just like discuss something? Um, the way I did this eventually with my team was that I started uh, typing in my Slack channel, hey, I'm stuck. Does anyone have time to help me? Um, and by, by kind of modeling that behavior myself, slowly it started becoming this team norm that it's okay to reach out. Um, it's also okay to ignore these messages, by the way, if you're in flow, you don't have to respond, but that makes it okay to reach out. Once you've reached out though and connected with someone, the rest of it is pretty easy. Uh, instead of walking over to them, you might start a video call Instead of walking around looking for an empty room with a whiteboard and like looking at your watch and being like, when's the next meeting in this room? <laughs> you just spin up an online whiteboard and, and get to work. I generally, um, like, like I said, I, I would, in terms of tools, I, I generally recommend having an iPad or some sort of a tablet. Um, Miro and Miro both have really great iPad apps uh, and and kind of co-sketching can feel very, very, uh, very fluid. Actually, after like the first three or four minutes of doing it. Um, in a pinch, I've also used sort of like a regular stylus on like the Mac trackpad and that works. You know, it's not, don't use the pencil on the trackpad, like just like a like $10 like stylus that you, old school stylus, like that works pretty well. So there's a couple of options here. But once you have the tools and you found someone, um, what I like to do is have, I just have like this blank sort of whiteboard mural um, that I always like, I always have this public link available. And anytime I wanna jump on sort of a little bit of a little quick conversation, I send people this link. So it's the same whiteboard, I just like erase it. <laughs> after every conversation, because mm -hmm. usually these, these conversations are about flu fluid ideas that don't need to be captured, really. Um, so yeah, so I always have this whiteboard link. I just send it to someone, send a public link. Um, and then it's just very much what you would do on a whiteboard. Like you might, you know, start, I might start using purple and saying, you know, here's the problem. I'm thinking about like what, extra information I need to show about this expense item. And then the other person might choose a different color, let's say blue, and they might say, hey, maybe you might wanna start listing what the actual uh, information is that you wanna send the user, when do you wanna alert the user? And then I might add something to that. So it's, this is very much sort of a very typical whiteboard experience that once you have sort of a stylus and 
a mural or a mural that you can do. I actually tried doing this on Figma um, five months ago and it wasn't really happening. I don't know if that's changed. So try, try. I don't know how, how well it works on uh, Figma or Envision freehand if you already have those tools. However, Miro or Mural are really, really great to go sketch. So you might be thinking, well, this sounds too easy to be true, right? It sounds like, eh, like it, you have to like, it, it's probably a little bit more awkward than what Shipra is making it sound like. And it is for sure. The first couple of times it is awkward. Just, you know, like the first time I remember coming to the States and having to peel off the sticker off of an apple. And I was like, why is there this like really sticky sticker on this apple? Like, it's just really awkward. And now like after like thousands of apples, it's just part of my process. I like take an apple, peel off the sticker, wash it, eat it. So it is an extra step. I'm not gonna say it's as seamless as like walking over to a whiteboard. However, once you create sort of a set of team norms around it, it can start to feel like just, you know, it's just the process. It's just the process that you have to go through to sketch together. Um, so that's one-on-one -on -one sketching. The other type of sketching that you probably do is in remote workshops. Uh, a remote workshops is generally, or any workshop, design workshop, is about finding alignment, generally with a group of stakeholders that are not all designers, right? So you might have a lawyer, a product manager, a marketing manager, et cetera, like a really diverse group of stakeholders where you're uh, probably in the early stages of a pro pro uh, project um, you're problem framing or ideating. Uh, and you wanna use sketching as a tool, uh, sketching as a tool for getting ideas. Uh, so workshops are, are definitely, you know, they're, they're, they require thoughtful planning and facilitation. And I'm not gonna go into how to facilitate workshops really because um, I have six minutes, but uh, I think every designer needs to be a facilitator. This is how you like kind of rise in your careers if you can facilitate design conversations. Um, assume, I'm gonna assume that you kind of understand how to facilitate a studio or a workshop. And the question is how do you do kind of the sketching bit remotely? So step one. Uh, know that some of these non-design stakeholders are probably already kind of intimidated by being asked to join a design workshop and, and being asked to sketch. Um, so the first thing you can do, you, you kind of every workshop tactic is like to mitigate that, that sense of intimidation to allow people to bring their ideas out. And the first step for me is like a very clear prep email right? If they were going to come into a room, I would bring these things to them. But since they're not coming to a room, I send them a visual email with a list of items, have a pen, not a pencil, like a thick sort of dark pen, maybe like even thicker than a ballpoint. Have some just pieces of paper, the back of a bill works, you know, it's okay if it's printed on one side, but some pieces of blank paper. Uh, your phone to take pictures of said pieces of blank paper and upload. Coffee and snacks, always useful. So very nice visual prep email. And then on these online whiteboards, I like to just have created a, a space, you know, a nice space for us to work in. Um, and this is kind of what my whiteboard might look like before the session, right? And the purpose of creating space again is for these folks, they're coming in, they're like, I've never used this tool, Miro or Mural. And what are we gonna do? It's three hours. What are we gonna do for three hours? So, so like just having a space um, helps people orient themselves. And as soon as they see this, they're like, okay, I'm gonna sketch something. I'm gonna put something in here. Um, and then we're gonna do some green, red critiques even if they don't know the whole process, they kind of know I have a place to go and do stuff. Creating a really clear space. And then into another uh, preparatory move for me, especially if people are new to using online whiteboards, is to get them to use the camera on their phone, take a picture of something and upload it to Mural. 
generally it's like an icebreaker. It might be take a picture of your feet because we can see the top half, but not the bottom half and upload it into Mural. And I like to keep like about five minutes uh, extra space in there uh, for anyone who's like, okay, well, I took a picture. What's the most efficient way to get this picture onto my computer? How do I get something into Mural and like just drag it in? But just having like five minutes, having people practice, kind of taking a picture, moving it in, in, a, in a fun, non-intimidating activity is usually a good idea if people are new to the tools, especially. And then you can start sketching, right? So I'm gonna assume that you've clearly framed the problem, that you've explained what you're looking for, that you've shown like a sample sketch in terms of level of fidelity and ugliness, um, that you've told people, I want your words. I don't care if it's a drop down or it's not, but like, I wanna know the words you use to describe things. Um, you might also do a warm up. I like 50 ways to use a pencil, some, any kind of ideation warm up. So I'm assuming that you've done all of that. And then you tell people, you know, to take your pen, take a piece of paper and sketch, right? Again, you might say, take five minutes to just sketch randomly privately, and then take five minutes to take your best idea and make it, make it shareable. Um, and you, you might set a timer for 10 minutes. And the, the thing that I suggest we do here while people are sketching is play music. When you're in a room full of people and everyone's sketching, you, you're kind of heads down, you're sketching, you look up, you see like everybody else around you is sketching. Um, but when you're alone, like you're kind of just sketching and it's kind of quiet, like the whole team is quiet, the Zoom call is quiet. Uh, playing music just creates that shared sensory environment, right? You feel like you're in, everyone's listening to the same music, everyone's jamming, everyone's sketching. Um, so creating sort of a shared space uh, in whatever way we can. Uh, I find music is, is quite important. Um, high intensity, no words, or no words in English or any language that anyone in the room speaks is, is good music to choose. And so let's say they've sketched, um, then you take a picture, right? And uh, to take pictures, uh, I always suggest people use a scan app. This might take another four to five minutes the first time people are doing this, but it's worth it because the next time it's not gonna take that long. Um, so in terms of scanning, if you haven't done this, um, the iPhone has a notes app, you know, that little yellow and white notes app. If you go in there, create a new note, it gives you an option to scan. And basically that's taking a picture, but the app adjusts the picture so that it looks like a scan document. It like adjusts the orientation and the lighting. It's really cool. Uh, the app that I like to use personally is um, this one on the right. It's the Google Photo Scan app, uh, which is meant for photos, <laughs> like to, to scan old family pictures, but it works really well for sketches as well. Um, and uh, both iPhone and Android users can download it. So using a scan app, and this might take a couple of extra minutes the first time someone's doing it. Take a picture put it in the space that you've created on your online whiteboard. I wanna show you an example of what it looks like when you don't follow all of these best practices. This is from a class I taught and it's uh, not UX, so I can share, it's not confidential. Uh, but you can see sort of the plethora of ways in which people sketch if you don't create enough boundaries. There's always gonna be someone sketching in pencil. You can see in the middle row on the far right, Generally, people who are not confident about their sketching skills or design skills uh, want to sketch in pencil so they can erase. It doesn't look as bold. It's, it feels safer. And so really setting expectations, perhaps even showing a picture of what a pencil sketch looks like and how hard it is to critique is helpful, I think, um, to remind people to use a pen. Um, you can see the shadows on, on the left, pictures on the left. Um, this happens if you're not using a scan app and with words and, and a UI and flows, it can be kind of disruptive to have shadows on the pictures. <clears throat> and the ideas get lost. That's the problem is sometimes the ideas on the images that look nicer might prevail even if 
just because the image looks nicer and was taken using a scan app. So you want everyone to be able to scan if possible. Um, you can also see someone using a ruled paper on the bottom right there and a green pen. Uh, not, not the greatest idea, especially if the pen is lighter than the rules. Um, and finally, uh, in the center on the bottom, you see that very clean white and black uh, image. And that, that's also a picture taken of a sketch, very similar to the rest of them. But this person used a scan app. Uh, I think they use Google Scan. And you can see how clear it is. They, they use the right thickness of marker. And it's just much e easier to go in and then see what that person intends for you to see. Yeah, so definitely following all the rules is worth it. Um, I, you can do a heat map style critique. Uh, I generally, again, the blue dots here are not the best way to do it. I create bigger dots that have about a 60% transparency so that you can still see the image underneath through the dots. Um, you can also do sticky note critiques. This, the whiteboards are amazing. So you can do whatever you want there. Um, <clears throat> and my final note to you guys is, uh, if you have to displace it, don't not share your screen. Use sort of a collaborative document. Frankly, if you don't have Miro or Mural, you can use like a Google Slides document and do the same thing, right? It's not great, but like it works, right? So I would say just use two displays and don't share your screen, work together on the collaborative space where everyone's working together. Um, no one person needs to be sharing and explaining what's going on. You can follow each other um, and then keep one screen to see all the wonderful smiling faces. So very, this was a very, very quick talk. I'm sure you guys have questions, but the one thing I will say is don't feel like you have to sketch alone. You can have these very early stage visual conversations, even while you're remote, just try it. Thanks. Thanks so much, Shifra. Really enjoyed that. Again, like such useful takeaway tips that I think everybody can find some relevancy uh, this day and age. <laughs> Absolutely agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shifra. That was amazing. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Good luck, you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.